Hello and welcome back everyone. So major connectors are that part of the prosthesis that helps to unite the two sides of the denture. So all of the parts of the prosthesis are either directly or indirectly attached to the major connector. And in order to provide adequate support to all the other parts, the major connector needs to be sufficiently strong and rigid. Now based on their design, major connectors can be divided into many different types. And today in this lecture, we will be briefly looking into the different major connectors that are used in mandibular removable partial dentures. So there are basically five different types of mandibular major connectors named as the lingual bar, the lingual plate, the sublingual bar, the cingulum bar, and finally the labial bar. So out of these five, the lingual bar and the lingual plate are perhaps the most commonly used mandibular major connectors and they can be easily chosen as the mandibular major connector of choice in most of the clinical situations while the rest of the three have some very specific indications and conditions in which they can be used as an alternative. So let's start first with the lingual bar. So lingual bar is perhaps the most commonly used major connector mainly because of the simplicity in its design. So the design of the lingual bar when viewed in cross section is a typical half pear shaped design with the base of the pear located just above the moving tissues of the floor of the mouth. While the tip of the pear is located towards the gingival margin. So what this means is that the bulkiest portion of the major connector will be located towards the floor of the mouth while the tapering portion or the more thinner portion is located towards the gingival margin. So this makes it a somewhat half pear shaped design. Now one thing to remember when fabricating the lingual bar or any major connector is that, that it should be contoured and smoothened out so that it does not present any sharp margins to the tongue. So this means that the superior border which is the thinner portion should be tapered gently without any sharp margins towards the gingiva. While the inferior border with the border with the greatest bulk should be slightly rounded and smoothened out gently while polishing. This will not only protect the lingual tissues under occlusal and masticatory loads, but this will also ensure a smooth and regular fit in the patient's mouth without any irritation. But for the lingual bar major connector to be of least irritating to the gingival margins, the major connector must be located at least 4 mm below the gingival margins in order to avoid any kind of interference or impingement to the gingiva. Similarly, placing the lingual bar as inferiorly as possible also avoids any kind of interference with the resting position of the tongue or with the trapping of food. At the same time, the lingual bar must also have adequate bulk to be sufficiently strong. So this requires the lingual bar major connector to be of at least 4 mm itself. Similarly, the inferior border must be designed and placed so that it does not impinge on the tissues of the floor of the mouth during normal oral functions, like I have previously mentioned. So one of the major indications of lingual bar is when the distance from the gingiva to the floor of the mouth is at least 8 mm, because 4 mm will be the space between the superior border of the lingual bar and the gingival margins, and 4 mm will be the vertical height of the lingual bar itself. So therefore, in total 8 mm. So if this 8 mm of space exists between the gingiva and the floor of the mouth, then the lingual bar is strongly indicated as the major connector of choice. At the same time, this will also be a major contradiction to the lingual bar if the space between the gingival margin and the floor of the mouth is less than 8 mm. Because this will simply mean that either the major connector may be placed slightly above which will cause irritation to the gingiva or it will be of inadequate bulk, providing insufficient strength and rigidity to the prosthesis. Although in this case, irritation from both the gingiva and the lingual frenum can be avoided by providing generous relief, but by providing such relief, it will cause the tongue and the food to trap. So in these cases, the next major connector, which is the lingual plate, is strongly recommended as a major connector of choice. So the lingual plate, as you can see, has a design that extends to the lingual surfaces of the teeth up to the interproximal contacts. But it should not exceed above the middle third except just to cover the interproximal spaces between the teeth. So the lingual plate has two parts. One is a superior border extending towards the teeth, while other is the inferior part 
located just above the floor of the mouth. So the superior border of the lingual plate should be made as thin as technically possible so as to avoid adding any kind of unnecessary bulk and weight to the prosthesis. While the inferior border should be the bulkiest part of the major connector with the same half pear shaped design as was with the lingual bar. Thus it provides the rigidity and strength to the design. So this simply means that the superior apron of the lingual plate must be composed of very thin metal extending up to the contact points of the anterior teeth, while the inferior border should be of the typical half pear shaped design, being more bulkier in the bottom and located just above the floor of the mouth. It is important to note that adequate relief must be provided under all soft tissue portions of the major connector and also at any location where the framework happens to cross the gingival margins. This relief is necessary in order to avoid any kind of irritation to the gingiva. So as I have already stated, the major indication of this kind of major connector is when the floor of the mouth or the lingual frenum is too high and the space available for the lingual bar to be placed is less than 8 mm. So in these cases, a lingual plate is often used as the major connector. A lingual plate when designed accurately can also help in resisting the horizontal rotation tendencies of a denture by providing a somewhat support to the remaining natural teeth, especially in the class 1 situations because in those cases the residual ridge most often has undergone excessive resorption and flat ridges often offer very little resistance to the horizontal rotation of a denture. Lingual plate can sometimes also offer a role of splinting the periodontally weak teeth. For this to happen, the lingual plate should be used properly with definitive rests in place. It can then act as a means of holding the periodontally weak teeth together, provided that the major connector is accurately contoured and fabricated. Sometimes a lingual plate is strongly recommended to be used as a major connector, even when the anterior teeth show interproximal spacing. So this interproximal spacing can result in the metal being displayed through the teeth and the patients often objectify to such designs because these are aesthetically very unpleasing. But if the dentist still thinks that the lingual plate must be used despite the metal being displayed through the interproximal spaces, so in such cases a different type of lingual plate known as the interrupted lingual plate can be used. So in this interrupted plate, the metal apron follows the contours of the individual teeth without being too much displayed through the interproximal spaces. But the obvious major drawback of this interrupted design is that the food trap can be of major concern and therefore special instructions should be provided to the patient. So the next is the sublingual bar. So the shape of the sublingual bar is essentially the same as the lingual bar except perhaps the bulkiest portion which is the inferior portion is located a bit more lingual and the placement of sublingual bar is a little bit inferior and posterior to the normal placement of the lingual bar. Thus it is lying just on the top of the anterior floor of the mouth. Therefore to summarize it is placed slightly inferior to the original position of the lingual bar which brings us to its major indication is when the floor of the mouth is high enough that it does not allow the superior border of the lingual bar major connector to be placed 4 mm below the gingival margins or when the depth of the floor is inadequate to allow the placement of lingual bar. So this sublingual bar major connector can be used instead of a lingual plate if the lingual frenum does not interfere. But the superior border of the sublingual bar major connector itself should be placed at least 3 mm below the gingival margin, not higher than that. Contraindication for this major connector include any present lingual tori, high attachment of lingual frenum or any severely tilted remaining natural anteriors. So the fourth is a cingulum bar. In this type of major connector, the metal is located on the cingulum of the anterior teeth and it is scalloped to follow the interproximal corners with the borders of the metal tapering towards the tooth surface. This type of major connector can be used instead of a lingual plate in some situations like when the anterior teeth require excessive blockout of the interproximal undercuts or when the wide diastema exists between the mandibular anteriors. So in these situations, a cingulum bar major connector may be more aesthetically pleasing than a lingual plate because of the minimal amount of metal being used in the cingulum bar.
but too wide of a diastema can also be a contradiction to using a cingulum bar because that will inevitably cause the metal to be displayed through the wide diastema. Also since the cingulum bar is not formed by thick supporting metal like a lingual bar, so therefore it lacks the much needed bulk and sufficient strength. So this is why a cingulum bar can be used alone or it can also be used with a lingual bar if possible. So this type is also sometimes referred to as double lingual bar because of the two different bar running across or also known as the continuous bar. So over here the lingual bar can provide the much needed sufficient bulk and rigidity to the cingulum bar but for doing that it needs to be placed slightly above its normal position and in doing so this type of magic connector having both cingulum and lingual bar can easily trap food in between the two metal straps and is often more objectionable to the patient's tongue when compared with a single lingual plate or bar. And if cingulum bar is used alone, it can reduce the possibility of food entrapment but it may not provide adequate rigidity or bulk and sufficient strength to the prosthesis. So the last is the labial bar major connector. So this major connector as the name indicates is placed on the labial or the buccal portion with the same design as the lingual bar with its bulkiest portion located inferiorly and at least 4 mm distant from the gingival margins. These inferior margins should be located in the vestibule at the junction of immobile and mobile mucosa meaning in the labial vestibule. So this labial bar major connector is rarely recommended in certain very specific situations like when extreme lingual inclination of mandibular teeth like the anteriors and the premolars do not allow the placement of conventional lingual bar. Although with conventional methods such as recontouring and doing necessary mouth preparations, you can almost always use a lingual bar major connector. But still in some very rare situations, using a labial bar major connector is the only possible choice. But recontouring and use of a lingual bar should always be considered first before resolving to using a labial bar major connector. The same can be said about a lingual tori. If a lingual tori for any reason is definitely contradicted for a surgery and a lingual bar or lingual plate becomes also unusable because of the presence of the tori, then a labial bar can be used. But like I previously said, unless surgery is absolutely contradicted, interfering tori should always be removed so that the use of labial bar major connector can be avoided. The other indication of this kind of major connector exists when any severe and abrupt lingual tissue undercuts make it almost impossible to use lingual bar or lingual plate major connector. In that situation, a labial bar may be used as the major connector. So this was a lecture that briefly described the five different types of mandibular major connectors. So I hope you like this video. Please take care of yourselves and I will see you people next time. Goodbye.